Well, this month, the American Bible Society released the sixth chapter of their 14th annual State of the Bible report. And this latest chapter focuses on the generational differences in people's perceptions of well-being, with an emphasis on data about Gen Z. The data presents us with a clear challenge. Gen Z adults have more fears, greater anxiety, lower self-esteem, and less affirmation from peers than any older generation. But we also see something else. Members of Gen Z who are scripture engaged, who interact regularly with the Bible and apply it to their lives, that means they don't just read it, but they apply it, well, they do better. How can families use this data to reach Gen Z with the message of the gospel? Joining me now to discuss this, Dr. John Plake, Chief Innovation Officer at the American Bible Society. Dr. Plake, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to see you. Thank you, Tony. It's a pleasure to be back with you today. All right, so let's talk about number one. First off, what? Uh, let, let's get the bad news first, then we're going to get the good news. Let's get the bad news when it comes to Gen Z. Well, you're right. It is bad news. And it hasn't just been documented by the American Bible Society, but lots of outlets and major researchers have documented that Generation Z, the youngest adult generation in America, is really struggling with their emotional and mental health. They have really high levels of fear, very specific areas, um, and some that are quite unique. But also, I think the good news is that their engagement with the Bible, for those who do engage with the Bible, things are really, really different. But I think Let's start with the bad news, right? I think if you look at the overall level of anxiety among Gen Z and you compare it to older generations in America, what you find is they have about twice the level of clinical anxiety symptoms. So when we talk about that, what we mean is what are they experiencing? What are they feeling on the inside? Those feelings of anxiousness, of difficulty with sleep, of difficulty with concentration, all those things about twice as common among Gen Z adults as they would be among baby boomers and then Gen X and, of course, the millennials in between. So what are some of the factors contributing to that? Well, you know, it's it's up for some debate. I mean, clearly the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the social changes that took place around the pandemic have been really important here. But most scholars believe that it's the fact that they grew up with screens in their face. And um, rather than interacting one-on-one -on -one with others and working out their challenges and their difficulties in face-to-face -face relationships, the intermediation of smartphones and other digital devices has not really helped them. And it's forced them to grow up in ways that maybe I didn't have to, or you didn't have to when we were younger, and maybe when they weren't yet equipped for all of that. All right. So th th that's reality. All right. We've got, and, and but this has been, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, but as you've gone through this, and we've been talking about this for a number of years now, because this is something the American Bible Society has been tracking, each successive generation seems to have, have less engagement in Scripture. I mean, we seem to be slipping away from it. So th that, that's the bad news. But the good news is for those who find it, and are drawn back to it or pointed to it, they're finding that the, the Word of God is true. Be anxious for nothing but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. And, and, and that's what the Gen Zers who are engaging with Scripture are actually finding. That's exactly right. You know, only 11% of Gen Z adults qualify as really being scripture engaged. They're consistently interacting with the Bible in a way that's shaping their choices and transforming their relationships. But if you look at them and you look at their levels of clinical anxiety symptoms, what you notice is that for scripture engaged Gen Z, their levels are comparable with the oldest Americans. So it wipes out this generation gap. There's something that happens when we begin to hear God speaking to us through his word that takes all of the anxieties and quiets them. And as you quoted from the Apostle Paul, the peace of God that passes all understanding does in fact guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And instead of having, you know, anxiety levels of 7.1 on this 10 point scale, they're at 3.4. So it's like less than half of what they were seeing from their compatriots. And that is really amazing. So, Dr. Plake, let me ask you the uh, the $64,000 question. Well, I guess with inflation, that would be the, 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 the half billion dollar question. How do we get the Gen Z generation and others, for that matter, 
into the Word of God. You know, there's some wonderful work being done on this by uh, folks like the Trauma Healing Institute. We have a resource both for Gen Z adults and for their parents to help them engage in conversation. But uh, what we asked Gen Z adults is we said, look, when you're struggling with these issues, where do you go for help? And what we discovered was uh, that the top three answers were really pretty fascinating. The first is that a large percentage of Gen Z adults actually go to a mental health professional. Uh, about 57% of them said, hey, we, that's where we would turn. Um, but online search was actually the second most popular option. So when Gen Z adults are struggling, they turn to Google. And I think that's interesting because it provides those of us who, are, who care about Gen Z to be there to meet them when they're searching for these things. And then the third thing is they would talk to a trusted family member. And so I think we can equip the church to know how to help young people understand the anxieties and the fears that they have in light of God's word. But we can also equip family and we can uh, be present in that online world when they're searching so they can find biblical answers to their genuine searches. Uh, and, and for those that might be uh, challenged on the breakdown of the generations, we're talking about those 18 to 27 fall into that Gen Z category. But, but, but this is relevant to all the generations. I mean, we're, we've seen, as I mentioned earlier, a slippage and I think part of that is because we've seen religion, Christianity, the Bible kind of marginalized in the public square. And so kids t tend to stay away from it because it's no longer like you don't see it in the schools. In fact, it's if it's mentioned, it's in a negative context. So introducing them to back to this concept that this may very well be what they're looking for to, to the antidote to to their anxiety does come with some uh, some opposition you know it can come with some opposition but these kinds of struggles also present opportunities and we find this again and again as people are disrupted in their lives they experience some kind of an emotional challenge or maybe they're just moving from one community to another or they're graduating from high school or college these sorts of disruptions present an opportunity for us to communicate the gospel in a way that's meaningful and relevant. And in fact, the data that we've tracked on the Uversion application uh, finds that, that people who are struggling with anxiety or they're struggling with uh, certain kinds of mental health behaviors and, and feelings, they often turn to, hey, does the Bible say anything about that? And so will we get everybody? No. But if the Bible speaks to these issues, then for someone who's searching, we can be there to help them find the answers to their search in the pages of Scripture. So similar, I mean, our conversations go back to, uh, to, to before COVID, but I remember having a conversation during COVID that the Bible reading actually went up as people were looking for answers and solutions. In this uh, problem, can be the opportunity to, as you just described, for those that are searching for something that they can't find anywhere else, this could be it. This could be the door that the church has been waiting for to introduce this newest generation of adults to the Word of God. I mean, isn't that really what we do, right? We listen to the challenges that people are experiencing in the culture and society all around us, and we provide biblical answers. And in this case, they're clinically proven biblical answers that actually do help. And so we can't control, we don't want to control when someone's experiencing a mental health crisis. We don't want that for them. But when they do, can they find help from the church? And the answer is clearly yes, according to the data. If we can provide them with what the Bible says and help to engage them in it at their point of need, not just at our point of reference, then we find that God meets them and he helps them and they do experience the peace of God. And that's what we want for all of our fellow Americans. Uh, Dr. Blake, as you go back, as you mentioned those three areas where they're most likely to turn to when they're faced with uh, dealing with trauma, the anxiety, they'll search online, they'll talk to a, a, a trusted family member. In, in your research, did you find that uh, maybe another Gen Zer, a peer who has found the solution, who is walking in that sense of peace that comes from an abiding relationship, that's what we're talking about, scripture engaged abiding in Christ, do, do they have uh, greater influence with their peers? 
You know, the gospel is always communicated best in the context of relationship. It's not an abstract idea that God has helped me. It's a relational idea. And so for those who are close to me, who are my friends or my neighbors or my coworkers or people that I interact with from day to day, they're interested actually and quite open to hearing the story of how God has worked in my life. And we actually see that more and more among Gen Z. I think there's an urban legend that maybe started in the baby boomer generation in the 1960s that that uh, talking about anything spiritual was sort of forbidden. But what we see among Gen Z is a new openness to uh, the gospel, an openness to hearing about how the Bible has impacted someone's life or how God has touched them. But it's important that that happen in the context of a relationship and that it come from someone that they trust and that they see as trustworthy. Right. Stories are powerful when you when you can talk about what God has done in your life and, and the struggles that you've had and how the Word of God has been uh, a, a source of strength, of hope, of peace, of joy. I mean, that carries a lot of weight uh, with someone that you're in, in a relationship with. But I think it goes to, while they're open, we've got to have the boldness to share that story. I think that's exactly right. And I think we have to have the proper resources. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is that the Trauma Healing Institute uh, has come out with a new resource they call Reconnect. And that Reconnect resource can be accessed by someone if maybe you're watching and you're like, I'm really struggling emotionally. Does the Bible have something for me? You can go to uh, traumahealinginstitute.org forward slash reconnect, and you can download that resource. It's absolutely free. And on that same page, Age, maybe you're the parent or a grandparent of someone who's struggling emotionally. There's a five-part uh, conversation guide and Bible study that can just walk you through what the Bible says about the hurts or struggles that you may be experiencing. And we just encourage you to do that. It's absolutely free, and it's exactly the kind of resource that's been shown to help people overcome these difficulties that are so prevalent in America's youngest adults. Speaking of that, uh, we just have a couple minutes left, but you've been tracking these trends where the, the, there's heightened stress for younger generations. This continues, apparently, evidence suggests with uh, Generation Alpha. Uh, how do we prepare and how do we counter the, the, this growing sense of anxiety, uh, uh, oftentimes driven by trauma? W what do we need to be doing to, to, to not just putting Band-Aids on this, but go to the source and begin preparing for these next generations? Well, you know, I think one of the things that really startled me was that the youngest Americans aren't only anxious and feeling anxiety, but they're actually afraid of a great number of things. And they're not just afraid of the things that maybe older people are afraid of, right? They're, they're not just afraid of grief, or they're not just afraid of loss, or they're not just afraid of economic uh, problems, but they're afraid of school shootings. Um, they're afraid of being sexually assaulted. They're afraid of uh, being victimized in their own culture. And so I do think that it's incumbent upon us to find ways to make safe spaces mm -hmm. for these young people and to help them know that they are protected so they can have an opportunity to hear God speaking to them. And then for those who are caring for them, for their teachers, for people who are in government, for people who are parents and grandparents, to provide them with resources so they can talk well about what the Bible says about how we live in a broken world. Yeah, so, so, so important. Dr. John Plague, always great to see you and uh, always great to look through the research and, and encourage people to apply it. So thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tony.